security model behind this three L's operating system. All right, so I already got the introduction. Uh, and actually, partially based on some work Ron has done, incidentally. <laughs> so uh, the 3L project, a scheme-based operating system I've been working on, focused on security and extensibility. Um, there's, in general two modes, a development mode and a security mode. I'll be talking um, in terms of the security mode right now. Things are much different in development mode. Um, this is very high level, simplified, and somewhat a work in progress still, just as a heads up. Um, so the runtime is fully R7 RS scheme compliant. Um, the First class environments I'll be talking about to provide the security model is an extension of Scheme. It's not portable, although you might be able to make it portable, but it would be way too slow to be reasonable. Um, but the thing to note is any R7 RS program will run within it just fine. Um, so an environment, which is what I'll be talking about um, for providing the security model, uh, we can describe as a collection of visible bindings, at least for this talk. Um, as you can see, we define foo, and it's defined. You call bar. It's not defined. It's not in your environment. Uh, here is an example of using um, an environment implicitly and explicitly. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, sorry. But uh, we define a variable foo. And at least in Scheme, by default, it's defined within the interaction environment um, implicitly. So you can call foo. But then when you call eval, uh, you can explicitly pass an environment. So we're passing the interaction environment. We're calling the same foo. So these first uh, four things are all the same reference. They're all the same foo. Um, with environment is sort of a, this is the thing specific to 3L, although in this case it could be a macro, but we'll pretend it's specific to 3L at this point. Um, and we're basically saying bind the interaction environment dynamically to all the code inside the with environment form. But then we can also use other environments. Uh, so we can make a new environment called, say, the empty environment, which just binds nothing. And as you can see, foo is now undefined. So uh, it allows you to run code within different environments, create environments, that sort of thing. Is that, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize the, the red would be so. Uh, all right. Yeah, so this is where we create a new environment, run code within that new environment. Uh, so now we'll talk about how this gives us some level of security. Um, so we start out in the in interaction environment. Like whenever you start Scheme, typically that's what you're going to get. You type in whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. So we're going to read from our passwords file. It has all our passwords. Um, then we have this file we downloaded from the internet, which in 3L is a program, uh, essentially. Um, in this case, we have the source code, but it could be compiled so you can't see what it's actually going to do. And it's going to try to read our passwords file. But we want to be secure. So we've created already an environment that has no I.O. binding, so you can't read or write to files. We run this program inside that environment and get an error, because that is not defined. So you're basically sandboxing. Okay, You're sandboxing any code you run inside that environment. Um, so this is, for example, how we create the noio environment. You can make it. It inherits from the empty environment. And we've imported. Uh, the base library from Scheme, which does not include uh, I.O. operations. 
Uh, I'll skip that for now. Environments are essentially full objects. Uh, you can create them, reference them, manipulate them, inherit from them. Uh, and if you want to learn more, I'm going to extend this. I didn't. I kind of ran out of time. But if you go to thints.com slash slide slash 3LS, I'll add links and more information. But all right. Mm -hmm. Literally nothing in it, right? So that means no function definitions? Yeah, yep. Uh, so now you have to, to do anything, you have to decide what you want to inherit. Correct. Okay, and then so uh, how is that typically done? Say, let's, let's say if you were to just, you know, let's say in common list, inherit the common list package, that mm -hmm. would all the function definitions, and all the things right. that would be like that. Uh, so uh, if you see here, um, the make environment uh, function or form, you can s explicitly say what you want to import into it. Um, it's actually a little more powerful than that, uh, but that gives you the general idea, hopefully. Yep. So now uh, you know, you're in your environment, but you're setting variables which are outside of your environment that really belong to what comes list package. They'll s no, they'll stay in that environment. They are not. They don't leak outside the uh, into the outer environment. You've created a new environment. I mean, so you could inherit from an environment, and yes, then you could. It would be visible outside of it, but that's why you probably want to create a new environment. You can explicitly pass in references, or you can just say you have no references to the outside world whatsoever. Okay, so are you, you distinguish read from write, or is it a function You can, yeah. Simple values you can read but not write? Yeah, in, in Scheme, you can basically do whatever you want. Like, I could even not give them access to define, so they couldn't define variables or functions, or I could provide my own definition of define that maybe inspects what they're trying to define. Basically, you can um, get in the middle of any program and make sure it does stuff that you're OK with it doing. Um, Well, so like in the example, if I run it in an environment that doesn't provide bindings for file I.O., um, if Ron were to try to use a function that does file I.O., it'll throw an exception because it doesn't exist in that environment. Um, so Ron could s try to import all the libraries he wants, and it may or may not actually work. So even if... Basically, the user has full control over the code. The developer no longer has full control of what gets imported. So the developer can say, hey, I need this. And you can say, OK, you can have it. Or you can say, I don't trust you. You can't have this. You can't have that. It's sort of like a very fine-grained version of like Android or iOS, where you can say you can use the camera or you can't, that type of thing. So if you stay in the language and you can mark or otherwise know that you've restricted your I.O., mm -hmm. that's great. But what about as the system grows and foreign function interfaces? So if I'm going to extend sort of the primitives of the language mm -hmm. I.O. operator, some things that similarly the rest of the system may need to know about, mm -hmm. how, how would you expect that to fit in or is it not going to consider foreign there is no foreign function interface. Um, everything on the system eventually uh, will run on either the scheme virtual machine or transpile the scheme itself. So you can still implement things like JavaScript, but in some way they'll be 
uh, compiled down to the same system, so you cannot escape it. Any, anyone else? 